Hello everybody and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. Today I finally bring you the review of Echines Falcon 250 FPV Razor. Previously we did an unboxing and you can check it out uh, on the link on the top right corner of the screen. In this review I intend to initially cover all the parts of the Echines Falcon 250 such as motors, camera, etc. and then later move on to talking about the flying experience. Then I will do a follow-up video covering FPV experience and quality of transmission. So please don't be angry if I don't include everything in one video. So okay. Now let's uh, start by covering the main parts of the Falcon 250. We start uh, by talking about the motors. The size of these motors is 2204 and their speed, if I'm allowed to use this word to make it more simple, is of 2300 kV. These motors uh, look much better than each Heinz Racer 250, which are also uh, 2300 kV. The electronic speed controllers of the Falcon 2, uh, 250 are 20 amps and they can officially support up to 4S batteries but I would not be surprised if they can handle more juice than that. These are smart electronic speed controllers meaning that they have an anti uh, uh, shaft locking <laughs> protection system that can cut the power of the motor in case the blades are obstructed. This can happen if you crash the quad and by some reason the motors are still spinning although I have personally not tested this feature yet but I will gladly do that in my uh, next video. You will get as part of the kit two sets of 5 inches uh, bullnose props and they seem rock solid to me and can take crashes better than the Geffman props that I usually use. Um, the, uh, you have one set that is black and then uh, one set of red props. All four motors are well protected by these plastic units, they are quite good but sometimes dirt can hide between the protectors and the motors so keep an eye on that. This is how they look from above, let me show you and I hope you can see the thickness better from this angle. Now the protectors seem to be held in place by six screws that you can see here below, easy to remove in case you need to replace them. If we take a look then at the LED lights that are located under each arm, they seem to be uh, rather vulnerable here, but uh, they can survive some crashes and they're really really easy to replace uh, in case you need to. Uh, each arm is held in place by bolts secure with nuts and it is a good idea to have a tool at hand just to perform any replacements while you're on the field in case of course you have the spare parts otherwise you wouldn't need the tools uh, then we have the landing gear made of carbon fiber and it's one of the areas of more stress during crashes uh, it might become loose or completely fall off then here on the side we have these iconic E and F letters that I guess stand for E Chine Falcon and right between them we can see the switch to turn on or off uh, the LED lights. The switch uh, is slightly loose to my liking, but it's not a big deal. If we move to the upper section of the quad then, we will see the upper plate of the quad, which is secured by eight bolts that you can see over here. And then again, it can be easily removed, just make sure you carry the right tool with you uh, when you're gonna play, uh, do the replacement. Uh, the carbon fiber plate here at the top not only holds the action camera in place but it also supports the actual FPV camera. This is a smart design as this plastic should be uh, easy and cheap to replace. It can definitely also absorb some vibrations but also I think that some vibrations could uh, move down to the FPV camera and it could affect the FPV experience but we will take a look at that with more details in my next video to see whether any of those vibrations are actually coming down. Uh, so you can also of course uh, adjust the angle of the camera to your liking uh, with the screw that is on the side of the plastic uh, support. Then to remove this, uh, the, the upper carbon fiber plate uh, we first need to uh, remove these screws that you can see here with a Chinese screwdriver. They're only two little screws and it takes no time to remove them. As you can see, once the screws are gone, you can just remove the plate from the dampening rubber bolts, which uh, are pretty firm by the way, it's good to mention that. These are pretty firm uh, dampening uh, rubber bolts or whatever you call them. And here you can see the, sorry, the carbon fiber plate plays an important role in keeping the FPV camera in place so my advice is that you secure the plate uh, using some tightening plastic straps as this becomes an essential component and losing it would affect uh, your FPV experience. Let's now cover the components inside the HN Falcon 250 and their layout. To access the components we will proceed to remove the upper plate uh, of the razor which is secured by eight screws in total. Six of the screws are identical 
uh, on the rear and middle section and the ones in the front section are, are slightly different with a flat head the upper plate is also kept in place by these uh, indentations that you can see here that insert into it from the lateral plates uh, this also reduces the stress on the screws making the razor resistant to impacts as it should be the FPV camera in the Falcom 250 has a resolution of 700 uh, TVL and is equipped with a CMOS sensor and has a field of view of 127 degrees diagonally and 110 degrees horizontally. According to the information I have, this little camera weighs only about 12 grams and is connected to the circuit board uh, via this connector that you can see here on the rear of the camera. Now, uh, removing the lateral plates is very easy once the upper plate is gone. You just need to pull them up and basically they come off easily. When putting them back, make sure that they're properly inserted into the circuit board and the upper cable fiber uh, frame. They seem to be made of 100% cable fiber and not some laminate. Now here it comes something that seems to be a downgrade in terms of what uh, this FPV Racer offers. If we contrast it with its predecessor, the E-Chine Racer 250, the Racer 250 comes with a 600 milliwatt 5.8 GHz transmitter, while the Falcon 250 has only 200 milliwatt video transmitter. It's hard to tell whether this choice was made to lower the cost of production or just to boost battery life. I'm more keen to believe that it was to extend the battery life, but uh, I, would need, I would like to hear your opinion about this. In case you haven't noticed, there is a tiny uh, channel selector on the top of the transmitter. Although it would be a little bit hard to access due to its position on the transmitter. Uh, I mean, because of the position on the transmitter there on the plate, but you can still do it. Uh, let me show you how the video transmitter is actually connected. You can see the video signal that the camera sends comes through the circuit board and connects to the transmitter via this connector that I'm showing you now. The yellow wire is video, then I assume the red cable supplies the camera as the camera runs on 5 volts and then the black wire should be ground and I'm not quite sure about the green one. Then the other connector on the left side with the black and red wires is the power supply to power the transmitter, to the FPV transmitter. Then, if we take a look at the rear part of the circuit board, we can see these thicker wires that supply the circuit board directly from the battery, and the soldering joints, they look decent to me, so that's good news. The electronic speed controllers uh, of the Falcon 250 uh, seem to supply the CC3D via circuit board as well. Uh, they connect to the circuit board via these servo leads that you can see over here with three pins. It is a very, they're very easy to disconnect in case you need to replace them. Although uh, the power input wires to supply the electronic speed controllers are actually soldered to the board. Now, as you can see, it does not take much uh, effort to unplug the connectors. And I guess it is a good thing that the positive wire is in the center. So let's just plug them in back again. Uh, as I mentioned to you a moment ago, the power leads that supply the electronic speed controllers are soldered to the circuit board and you can see that they're labeled uh, B plus or uh, B minus for uh, positive and negative. Next, if we move to the wires that supply the LEDs that are located under the each uh, arm, um, there is a little aperture uh, in the arm that allows the wires to go from the board to the LEDs. Let's take a look at where they are actually connected on the circuit board. You can get a better look at it here. I'm pointing at it now. Uh, I hope you saw that well. As we saw before, uh, here we have the LED light switch. If you're flying during dark hours or inside a building, you want to keep those lights on. But during a bright day, there's not much uh, use to them. Right on the top, we can see the wires coming from the receiver and they control movements, uh, I mean, flying modes, etc. So you have a channel for the throttle, the ailerons, and so on, so on, so on, so on. And you can see that the CC3D is fixed to the frame with four screws and these uh, plastic tubes sort of uh, help to keep the flight controller separated from the circuit board. The, AC, the uh, sorry, electronic speed controllers are connected to the board uh, and then they supply the flight controller via these connectors that you can see over here that are also 3-pin connectors. The FlySky receiver that comes with the Falcon 250 is attached to the c 3 d flight controller with some sticky pads uh, that keep, keep it in place. 
Although it's not very comfortable to access the connectors as they are actually facing downwards uh, towards the circuit board. But, well, I mean, that's the way it is. You can obviously open it and, and, and change that a bit. And here's the flight controller seen from above and something that I want you to keep in mind is that it's going to be a little bit hard to access the USB port under the C3D to connect it through your computer. Then the FPV camera is connected to the board via this connector over here and it sends a video signal to, to the transmitter via the yellow wire. It's very easy to connect and disconnect the camera in case you need to uh, replace it. And let's take a look now at what we already saw before basically the connection for the electronic speed controllers but this one is the uh, one in the front section of the quad and this is how things look from above I mean all the connectors in the front section of the razor the power supplied for the front LEDs comes directly from here you can see the positive and negative uh, wires soldered to the board now the FPV transmitter and uh, the rear section is secured in place by this carbon fiber plate that you can see over here which also has an opening for the power wires that connect the circuit board to the battery and here's the battery connector for the HN Falcon 250 now that we have seen all the components it is time to go out there and take the Falcon 250 for a flight to unlock part of the hidden potential of this FPV Razor, I suggest you use a forest battery. It was my impression that the forest battery provided with uh, that extra kick that was less evident when flying with a 3S battery. To record the action, I'm using my Mobius Cam, which is very light and can certainly take some punishment. So, without further ado, let's take this bird for a flight. Now, you saw this uh, thought of uh, thrust is something we certainly don't see present in the HN Razor 250. So for those of you that might ask, the Falcon is certainly the speedier and more powerful flyer. Uh, from the point of view of stability, the Falcon performs nice, but you must consider that due to the tilt of the motors, this FPV Razor is certainly eager to go forward. Uh, it does not like to stay in the same place for too long. It's like an actual hungry Falcon just wanting to find its prey and eat it. Now, of course, uh, this is my perspective. I mean, I'm certainly not an incredible FPV racing pilot or anything like that. Uh, I mean, maybe like real FPV racing pilots would find this quad super slow, but I think still my uh, perspective is relevant and because not everybody is a professional FPV uh, pilot. As I was mentioning before, uh, the Falcon is eager to go forward, so we, let's take it for a, for a spin in the first flying mode, see how things go. And now, uh, as I start to fly, there's some people walking around, I'm a little bit stressed. I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't actually fly where there are people around, but well, I have no choice now, I need to finish this review. This is starting to feel really nice now. Uh, this is supposed to be the really gentle flying mode, but the Falcon 250 is already showing that it's a really bad angry bird. Oh my god, this is really nice, so much power right out of the box. This is really, really, I mean, out of the box. I have not plugged this quadcopter to my computer or touched the settings at all. Just plug and play, it does not get any easier. Uh, how can you not love this feeling? <laughs> of course, there's beauty in, ton in tuning and testing your own settings. And you can, of course, do that, no problem. But if you just wanted to get your adrenaline rush instantly right out of the box, uh, you can just basically do it. I mean, this is roaring like a beast asking for more and more juice from that forest battery. Give me more, I'm a hungry little bird. I can picture those electronic speed controllers getting hot as they uh, suck dry the battery. Maybe you have, but I have not tried a faster uh, ready to fly quad culture, I mean, out of the box. So, I mean, if you know of any other faster quad culture right out of the box, you just let me know. And uh, as I saw, as I, you see now, <laughs> basically uh, this thing gains a lot of momentum while flying down and I was, while I was trying to hold it there, I really, really couldn't uh, keep it uh, in place and I crashed. And this is a great opportunity now to check what damage you know, uh, can the quad take when it crashes. You can see here that this uh, motor is perfectly in shape, just there is some dirt in between the motor and the protector. One thing that did happen is that one of the props and um, two of the props got damaged and I lost one of the dampening rubber balls that you can see over here. Uh, not a big deal, but I, as I was telling you before, you need to secure that uh, carbon fiber plate. All the other motors and components are basically intact. 
but the antenna, the antenna did get some damage, as you can see here. It goes slightly butchered, <laughs> but I will survive. I'm not sure whether this is the best place to place the, to put an antenna, but well, I mean, it's there, so have to deal with that. And but I mean, everything else looks pretty much intact. Yep. Although the battery did fly away, actually, it's the first time I've seen a forest battery fly faster than an FPV Razor, <laughs> and I think it happened right now. That's a fast forest battery. It, it probably flew like around five meters away from the from the FPV Razor, and the same happened to my Mobius. But well, I, I I found them again and put everything back in place. So here we have again the Falcon 250 ready to go, and let's see whether everything is working properly. Motors armed, requesting permission to take off. Permission granted. So let's go ahead and test it again. Let's see. Boom! <laughs> like new pretty much the only thing i had to do is basically replace the props then again falcons are hungry birds so you need to feed them properly don't give them a 3s batteries give them what they deserve forest batteries that's a proper diet for a falcon let's now go to the conclusions uh, first let me tell you that i will cover in my next video the fpv transmission and the camera performance and other flying modes and battery life etc so the uh, to see whether you know uh, also we can hook a cx uh, cx uh, sorry a 6s battery sorry uh, but uh, we'll do that in the next video what i found good about the falcon well the price i mean is just right above 200 bucks completely ready to fly out of the box and if you don't like ready to fly well you can always get the version without the receiver and uh, do your magic i also like the build quality uh, the fact that it can take a good crash like a real falcon and not complain much about it the flying uh, in the first mode is really awesome i mean it's supposed to be a gentle mode but it's pretty aggressive actually i'm sure that if you play with the settings a bit more you can do some insane stuff with this uh, fpv racer battery life seem better with the 4s battery than uh, 3s battery but i will cover that with more details in my next video what i didn't like much about the this uh, fpv racer was the fact that it can be quite hard to access some of the components like the usb connector in the flight controller and the connectors in the receiver uh, that it also comes with a 3s battery rather than a 4s I, I think it should come with a 4s battery and that's that was my impression that it did much better with the 4s battery also the fact that the video transmitter was downgraded from 600 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts and the OSD unit removed I mean if I contrast it with the HN Racer 250 in that aspect other than that I think it's a great choice for anybody that uh, with little experience or even with uh, more experience because uh, I mean you get real power out of the box so people with that have you know not much experience tweaking this kind of uh, fpv razors they're just gonna love it and those of you that can actually do some tweaking and and, and stuff like that you will still love it because you can still connect it to your computer and and, and uh, input your own uh, settings and, and test a little bit different settings to see what works best okay if you like this review and found it useful please uh, do like my video and if you have any questions or you would like to correct anything i say that doesn't make sense uh, do not hesitate and place some comments below, I will certainly get back to you. And if you like the topic of drones in general and would like to receive the latest news and reviews directly from China, do subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. I hope to see you all in my next video.